Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Writer, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. It is quite a long one, so uh, if you want, uh, please do uh, make yourself a cup of tea or uh, get some popcorn. And this is of a patient who needs to attend uh, twice a year and they suffer from chronic otitis externa. So otitis externa is an infection of the outer ear and they experience inflammation, so edema of the ear canal. You can see it's really swollen here. Loads of ottery, which is ear pus, and a buildup of dead skin keratin. And this is the patient's left ear. Um, the right ear was actually the more complex one. Uh, I'm not saying this wasn't complex, but um, out of the two. So do stay tuned. Um, you will see the, the procedure for the right ear. Now, the main, the, the two main challenges we have, well, three main challenges, I should say, is that first of all, the patient's ear is already uncomfortable. It's tender because of the infection, so we have to be extra cautious. Um, secondly, um, the mid canal section, where it's really swollen, on occasions it would collapse, and that can happen if you've got an infection and you've got edema, so you've got a buildup of fluid in the cells. When you perform suction, the, the water in the cells get attracted by the sucker. So the suction probe inadvertently is trying to suction the fluid in the cells, which causes the canal to collapse. On several occasions, um, I had to uh, immediately evacuate the ear because the ear canal collapsed and it can be really uncomfortable for the patient. You'll probably see that a bit more in their right ear because that was a bit more swollen, but it did happen here on a few occasions. Now, so far, I was, I was um, quite pleased because it was coming out in, uh, although there was quite a lot of debris in there and it's quite wet, but it was coming out in big chunks. And typically in the past, it's been a real struggle because of the consistency. Now, once I've removed this more, uh, this layer of dead skin, wax and discharge, the consistency of the wax changed and it was very mushy. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that uh, the mushy type of debris or wax or skin, whatever it may be, that consistency is the hot, they, just coming back to that collapsing of the canal, you just may have seen that the canal collapsed, so that was what I was referring to, and when you've got a mushy consistency, it's so difficult to vacuum, especially when it's on the eardrum, because um, you, you're trying to apply a bit of pressure to get a suction grip and to clear it, and obviously that's the most sensitive part of the ear, so I'm just going in really cautiously, I'm just worried about the canal collapsing. So at the moment, I've decided not to go any further into the ear with the endoscope, just in case the canal collapses over the endoscope, which would be a bit uncomfortable, for the, but a bit more uncomfortable for the patient than just going over the sucker. So just in the distance, we can see some of the, the eardrum, the superior part, the top part of the eardrum. Again, I'm just crawling really cautiously. Um, still a bit reluctant to go any further with the endoscope at the moment, but you will see me creeping further forwards with the endoscope. So when we haven't got the sucker in the ear, it's okay for this, the, the endoscope to go as deep as we want because it's not gonna, the canal's not gonna collapse on its own accord. It's just when the sucker is also introduced into the ear. So this is this mushy consistency I was just alluding to earlier. And to, the only way you can really remove this is by just using loads of drops. I use a combination of olive oil ear spray. Um, I use the brand Clear, which um, I, uh, I've been recently appointed as healthcare advisor. Um, you can find the link for the Clear olive oil spray and other products in the description below. Um, but I also had to use sodium bicarbonate drops as well. Um, sodium bicarbonate drops does quite work quite well with this consistency. So I've just gone to the front part of the ear canal and we're quite deep in the ear now. Um, I've managed to get hold of a sheet of dead skin. I'm just trying to peel it away from the canal wall. See, even at this stage, the patient is able to hear significantly better. Just to pre-warn you guys, um, I'm not gonna get every little aspect out. Um, but I'm very pleased with what I managed to do. Uh, although the video length is about 33 minutes, uh, in reality, the patient was sat in the 
in, in the clinic room for between 50 minutes to an hour. Um, so obviously on times I've had to come out with the suction probe to, um, the suction probe to unblock it. Uh, there was also occasions where we had to soak the air with the drops and I used to let it sit there for a few minutes. Um, now, in a normal clinic, we allocate half an hour slots only because yeah, the most deal batch removals are done within minutes. Um, but nonetheless, I always allow myself half an hour just in case we have really complex procedures. But this obviously was even more complex and um, we did have a patient waiting afterwards. So um, knowing that I was going to be over, I did um, go out to the reception room and just speak to my next client. Uh, just to advise that we are running a bit over uh, and we don't want to rush the job and patient very understanding which is always nice um how often do i go over my half an hour slot very rare probably maybe two or three times a year um the majority of procedures uh, it's a question that we get asked quite a lot when people call up to book um it's literally a minute or two per is so uh, majority of the videos um, that the procedures I perform I don't well I don't actually upload because they're so straightforward or then they may not be so straightforward but the show they're so quick that um, in the past I know uh, people prefer the longer videos so uh, I have got them all archived so I'll, I'll probably kind of do a few compilations and include all these longer procedures uh, short procedures together in one longer clip so I'm just working at the top of the ear canal there. You can see some dead skin. There's a sheet of dead skin. I'm just trying to peel that away, but skin is really adhesive. You can just see how much swelling there is there. Probably the best analogy of the sensation you're doing this is imagine you have some really sticky... Um, sellotape and it's stuck on a piece of paper and you're trying to peel that away um, but without tearing the paper and it's, it's similar obviously it's a bit more difficult than that um, but it's the best analogy I can give so you just have some perspective of the feeling of what we're trying to do inside the ear there so I've just put some more drops in there I'm just gonna let that soak And what I do first, I just try to remove some of the residual drops. When you've got a narrow, you can see how narrow that mid canal now is. Uh, now that I've come away with the endoscope, you can see the narrowing. And when you've got a narrowing like that, it's challenging um, in terms of not only getting the view, but also the maneuverability of the instrument in the ears. You've got less space now. Um, a speculum, uh, if this narrowing was closer to the entrance, a speculum, like for the wax goat, for example, would help stretch and dilate the ear, but this narrowing, this swelling is too deep in the end. The speculums um, that we use for ear care, they don't go all the way into the ear canal. Um, that's for a reason, because if you've been watching my videos and following my channel, you, you may be aware that the inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's very, very sensitive. It's made up of bone with the thinnest layer of skin, less than 0.1 millimetres in thickness, lining the, the bone. And if you come in contact with the bony part of the ear canal, it's really uncomfortable for the patient. So um, the specular that um, is used for ear care is um, it designed just to fit in at the uh, maximum depth at the juncture between the bony part of the ear canal, so the inner two thirds, and the end of the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal, which is the outer third of the ear canal. We call that the osseo cartilaginous portion. Anything beyond that, uh, the speculum can become in contact with the bony part of the ear canal and become very uncomfortable. So, um, a speculum wouldn't really be useful um, to dilate this ear because it's too, the, the, the most prominent swelling there, the narrowing is too deep. So I was just checking the records and the patient has to, let's say the 10 every six months, they previously had their ears, they've been to a number of clinics, um, but 
obviously they found myself a few years ago and they've been coming ever since and it is challenging it is one of the most the more complex ones patients that we that we treat on occasions um it can get this done well within half an hour but it is on this occasion it just took a lot longer and i have to get into stress i'm not going to get every little aspect out um some of you may be aware that i disabled the comments a while back and um I don't think I'm going to revert back to that. It's it's actually working quite well. I don't have to read, D- despite the fact that I receive loads of um, lovely, um, genuine, heartfelt comments, which are it's really nice. But then you do get quite a few horrible ones, nasty ones, and even seeing one of those, it can just put you in a. It's not a nice thing to having to constantly read, and with the high volume of comments I used to receive on a daily basis um, I actually think just to save in the comments and these are one of the procedures that historically I would be really really worried to upload because of some of the comments because knowing that it's going to be um, a bit of residue left behind and you just get some really nasty comments with you, to the point where you think well there's only point even uploading the videos you just want to receive that and read that but um, you may have seen there that the, the patient flinched and had to come out and that's because the canal had collapsed again. Um, but when the canal collapsed, it was actually into the ear and the endoscope was past that swelling. So um, we just have to be careful, just be wary that it doesn't happen again. You may have seen the eardrum just flex there as well. And that's another thing with this consistency of debris and wax. It's very mushy. So you're having to make contact with the eardrum believe it or not you have to kiss the surface to to take this off the eardrum and it can cause the eardrum to flex so again what i'm doing i'm just trying to go work from behind normal see if i can peel this away and i think i was able to peel this to reveal some of the top part of the eardrum and i was hoping that it would also uh, be the case with the rest of the eardrum i just continue to peel that the whole eardrum would be visible but it wasn't unfortunately that's where the skin stopped and again i'm just going to the back part i'm just trying to peel this away but it's really strongly it did you may you may have seen i've just kinked the suction proof just bent it a little bit which enables me to get better access to the back part of the eardrum and then I can rotate that fine, so I'm using the fine end now, um, I can rotate that the opposite direction if I want to remove some debris from the front part of the ear canal near the eardrum. So you can see some of the underlying eardrum there. Now compared to when the first patient first came in and really, even at this stage, I'm really, really happy. You can see the difference of how clear the ear canal is. The patient is on chronic, uh, not chronic, they're on a regular prescribed tr- uh, treatment, um, topical treatment for their otitis externa, so they use um, antibiotic ear spray and drops on a regular basis. But um, we're not, uh, the, the patient's been suffering from this for the last 10 or so years. It may be linked to their menopause, which they went around the same time. It's, it's something that uh, the link between dead skin, in ear infections, debris in the ear and menopause is something that um, I've not really seen in the literature. It's just to experience that I've, uh, I've, I've noticed a potential link between the two. So um, one of the symptoms of um, menopause, and it's not my expertise, but just to speaking to patients suffering from it and some of the research I've done online, is dry skin, irritable skin in, in different parts of the body. Uh, but the ear's never been known to be one of them or listed as being one of them, but it was just too high um, of, a, of, a, of an instance rate between patients going undergoing menopause and developing ear symptoms, for me anyway, to be just a coincidence. And so if patients are suffering from menopause, uh, suffer from dry skin or what, better place other than, than the ear for them to experience that because you see the ear canal is completely lined with skin and the skin unlike any other part of the body really um, if you've got some dry skin that's sh- dyed and shedded off your forearm for example just through mechanical motion during the course of the day whether it's when you put your clothes on when you're showering this dead skin will fall away 
and uh, but in the ear the skin can't simply just fall away because if it did it will just collect in the ear so the ear has evolved over millennia to naturally shed and migrate dead skin out of the ear so um, the skin that's on the middle of the eardrum once that's died and shedded it should move sideways and it works on a ripple effect so imagine you've got a pond and you have a, a stone or pebble and you drop it in the middle of the pond from the core from the center you'll see this ripples going outwards radiating uh, outwards and that's how the skin it's the same mechanics it radiates from the middle outwards and then from the ear canal it slowly works its way to the entrance and out of the ear and that continuous cycle of the skin dying and shedding and migrating out of the ear um, that helps also to transport any wax sitting on the surface out of the ear and the rate of mi that migration can vary between 1.5 millimeters to 3 millimeters a month it's the same rate as our fingernail growth ironically uh, interestingly so i've just put some more drops here i think we're more or less done now i don't think i'm gonna be able to get any more out but the patient can hear much much better they're really really happy continuing to try to remove that off the eardrum the only i'm just i've put so much pressure on already that any more that i'm going to go through the eardrum and we don't, obviously don't want to do that and the patient's aware that you know they can hear so quickly better and now that we've got this blockage out this skin should hopefully just start to migrate away previously couldn't because all the debris in front of it but as i said any any continuing to go onto the eardrum anymore, putting any more pressure on the drum will potentially perforate, and that's the last thing we want to do. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So this is the patient's right ear, and you can see this ear is a lot more narrower. Um, it's not as wet and discharge as the, the patient's left ear. So I initially used a, a full-size on the suction probe, but it just wasn't even going to go in the end. It was, it was collapsing straight away, so it reverted back to the fine end. Again, this is really blocked beyond, beyond this, the swelling. You can see the swelling there. As soon as I'm going with the sucker, the canal is collapsing. So all the swelling, all the fluid, all the edema within the cells of the ear canal, which is causing the swelling, it's getting attracted by the vacuum. So as soon as I put the suction probe in, it's the cells, the water in the cells is kind of go into the sucker, which is causing the, um, the, the canal to collapse. And you can, if you look really carefully, you can see all the skin cells there. You can see the individual cells um, lining the canal. And those skin cells, they are called stratified squamous epithelial keratinous um, skin cells. So the term stratified means layers. So the, the the skin that lines the ear canal, we have layers. I think they have five layers. And the term squamous refers to uh, almost like a, a fish scale. It's got that shape about it. So it's like a flat, like a pancake. And you can actually see those there. Keratinous is these um, skin cells have the ability to um, secrete the protein keratin. So keratin is the same protein found in our fingernails and hair. And keratin uh, it can take up a yellow appearance. So if you think about your fingernails as they get bigger and bigger and if they're not trimmed, they turn yellow. Um, so keratin has got that appearance about it. And keratin has got quite a few useful properties. It's hydrophobic, so it repels water. And as you know, water is bad for the ear. And it also helps protect against harmful UV rays from the sun. Uh, so, so these skins have the ability to secrete and code for pro, um, keratin. So again, you can just see how narrow this is. And once you get through the swelling, the ear canal does widen quite a lot. So again, you're just going to have to bear with me on this procedure it's one of those it's just going to take it really slowly what i did figure out is if i go higher up now where i am it's less likely for the canal to collapse and that just goes through trial and error so the more i was going in and out of the patient's ear and i was experiencing the canal collapsing i noticed that if i go into the canal at a higher angle towards the top part of the roof of the ear canal it's also it's not collapsing as a lot so that was useful to know 
So you can see if I went to the bottom, it, it collapsed and I went to the top, I managed to get through. But again, this type of consistency is not too bad. Um, it, it's easy to peel and remove away. But similarly to the patient's left ear, as we approach the eardrum, um, the canal, um, the, the consistency, sorry, of the, again, this is a collection of a bit of earwax, but the majority dead skin debris and um, otter ears that kind of pass from the, from the infection that they chronically have. It's all amalgamated. And you can see there's that skin layer that I'm peeling away. It's a, that's the skin that's lining the canal, coming off the canal. That's a fresher layer of dead skin. So it's white and over time, that layer of skin, if we didn't treat this here, that skin will get pushed more and more away from the canal into the center of the um, plug of dead skin and debris. And it will slowly change in color, um, in part because there'll be more keratin protein in the skin, but also because it will oxidize. Now it oxidizes, um, similar to our wax, and also if you think about an apple or an avocado, it discolors to more dark black appearance and dark brown. So again, I've just put loads of, um, I think it was sodium bicarbonate drops I put for this. So once more, speculum wouldn't dilate this, this, this patient's ear canal. It's too, uh, well, the speculum that we use for ear care when the patient's waiting now for surgery, it may be a bit different. The speculum that used for surgery when the patient's asleep or local anaesthetic, you can get longer ones. And see the patient's asleep and or they anaesthetize, they're not gonna feel the pain. See, it's just got a block there. So I've just come out of the ear and unblock the sucker. Problem with the fine end, it's prone to getting a lot more blocked, especially with this consistency. But little less we can do, it's going to persevere now. We can't use water to flush it. I know in the past, when I've had ear infections, people ask, why don't you just use water? Well, water is one of the main reasons why people develop ear infections. So the last thing we want to do is get water in this patient's ear. We don't, obviously, because they've got an infection, we don't know. Now, I know this patient enough that they don't have a perforation, but if the patient has a perforation, the last thing you want to do is get water in there. So, yeah, you would never use, or you shouldn't be using water to flush out someone's ear and they've got an infection or, like this. So I'm just going back to the front part of the ear canal, just trying to peel this away. I hope most of you are still watching. I thought I did warn you it's a long one. I promise I'll upload this one today if possible um, for a colleague of mine. Uh, there was a video that I uploaded yesterday um, of a patient who was referred to me by a colleague. Um, it, was, and the, it, was, it was a difficult case and the audiologist also wanted to know was that would I classify that as a complex one? And I said, yeah, that wasn't more of a complex one, but um, I said that there is more complex procedures out there. And I said, I'll, I'll upload this one to give them an idea. And the reason for that is that uh, the audiologist is interested in attending our ClearWax course. They're currently using a different mode of visualisation in the ear, which um, would not enable them to be able to perform a complex procedure like this. So they were very keen to see just what is possible with um, the eye clear scope. 
Um, even with the wax gate, my other device, I would I'd say it'd be, it'd be quite challenging. It'd be more, it's a challenging case already, but I would definitely uh, myself prefer to see you, um, use the iClear scope, endoscope for this. Again, I just don't want to put the endoscope any further at the stage because the canal was collapsing. So I'm just putting the endoscope just at where, where we are now. This is the narrowing, but I'm slowly going to feed it through. You can see there. And once you get through that narrowing, you can see the canal, it does widen a lot. So if this debris was a bit drier and a bit firmer, it would have been so much easier to remove. You just suck it and it comes out in a big lump, but just to add to the challenge, it's not. It's just a difference. It's mushy consistency. So again, the sucker just got blocked, just come out of the ear and blocked it. Another challenging aspect at the moment is that I don't know, I know we're near the eardrum, but I don't know the exact location of the eardrum because of this layer of debris and gunk. So I don't want to penetrate this layer too, too, too deep because if I do, I run the risk of going through the patient's eardrum. So I'm almost sparring with it. I want to just kiss the surface and slowly work myself closer and closer to the eardrums until I can see it. So again, just be careful, I don't put too much pressure and I'm not poking in too deep. But the frustrating thing about this was just it just kept blocking the suc suction probes and I keep having to come out and go back in, despite using loads of drops. So I'm just going to the, almost the roof of the ear canal, I just managed to peel away thick layer of softened dead skin. Now I can just about see the top part of the eardrum, you'll see it, I'll kind of explain. So just at the roof at the top, um, you can see a blue tinge and that's the patient's eardrum. So I've got some idea now of how thick this layer of dead skin and discharges it's probably about a millimeter in thickness so it just gives me a bit more confidence now going in a bit deeper you can see the sucker got blocked but i managed to clear it just by shaking the tube but i think it gets blocked again in a moment there we are so i'm going to come out of the ear and block it working more from the mid canal now. I just want to peel this away, see if it peels all the way to the eardrum, which I don't think it did. I can sense that this is going to come out in a bigger plug. Um, it's a bit more binded together, so I've just unblocked the sucker. I just think I'll put some drops in. I'm going to try and go back to that region, I think, in a moment to see if I can remove that. So I'm just suctioning the excess drops out first. There we are, so I'm just in that same part and I can feel it almost trying to come away in a big piece. So and I just want to come away slowly, I don't want to lose this because it, it, it was felt a bit more firm. I gone in but it's just the canal was collapsing so I just start pause come back out and just re-entered so 
Yeah, we've got a nice tail of dead brain dead skin that peeled away in one singular piece. Once more, I'll just put another layer, another top up of drops. So we can see the the north um, west quadrants. So we call that the posterior superior quadrant of the eardrum. So that's fully visible now. There's, there's a, it, the eardrum is quite opaque, so it's quite white in appearance, and there's a lot of staining on there. Remember all this debris; it's sticky. So as we take it off the eardrum, there's going to be some staining. I can't really remove that. So. Um, you, you will see the full eardrum on this side, but it will be a bit of staining debris there. Just being careful because the canal is collapsing in once more. So I'm just near the base of the eardrum, the inferior recess. I'm just trying to peel it up and away. I probably did have a couple of minutes rest with my hand. I probably came out of the year just to talk to the patient, just to rest my hand because it, it's, it's, it was quite a long procedure and it's a very precise procedure as well. So your hand needs to be really, really steady and that can put a lot of tension and strain on your on your forearms, especially on your in, on your shoulders and just in your arms in general. What's fantastic about the endoscope there, because you may, just come back to the moment, you may have just seen the eardrum flex there, so we're gonna be really careful. Um, so I, I have myself got uh, head loops, which is probably the most commonly used technique to remove wax in the UK. I'm not a big fan of it, truth be told. I don't think it's very good, but uh, hence why I've developed the wax scope. Um, but I've also got an ENT operating microscope, and with both of those, um, it puts a lot of strain in your back. Now, I suppose if you're using it all the time, it's it's fine. But I'm always constantly have to lean forwards, readjust um, my my body. Um, with uh, it's, it's the patient move, and obviously I've got to move my whole body and lean, always leaning forwards. But with the endoscope, even with the patient moves, it's just more your wrist going up, forwards, and back with the endoscope. So it's less strenuous on my back, but definitely um, you need strong. You do, and you do develop that muscle memory. So uh, when I first was using it, I go, oh, this is a bit, it's going to be a bit challenging, it's a bit hairy, but then it just becomes second nature. But of course, when you do a procedure for almost up to 50 minutes, you, you need to stress your hands in intervals. So you can see the, you can see the entire eardrum. Yes, there is some staining there. So again, this is really sticky stuff. And when we take it away, you're going to see a bit of stickiness there. But I'm really happy with that. And I think... The patient was also quite exhausted <laughs> sitting still in the dip for that long. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Do take care. Keep well. Speak soon. And do stay tuned. Bye.